Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside me today. It doesn't matter what time of day I start, what day of the week it is, <laughs> somebody is mowing somewhere. So I've come out here on this beautiful, right on the cusp of summer into fall here in the middle of September. We still have a few weeks till the season opens up and my part of the state of Pennsylvania have to wait till October 2nd. So many of you have already started across the country and I'm very jealous to say the least. But I've come out here today because I want to talk about some of the things that I've kind of been reflecting on uh, over this past summer about stuff that has been kind of stumbling blocks for me in my archery journey. I've been shooting a bow for 18 years now, at least 18 years seriously. And the stuff that I've come across that I wish that I'd never given a second thought and the stuff that I wish that I would have been focusing on from day one. So I want to talk about those things. I'm sorry if you're kind of a, uh, you know, not really beginner, intermediate archer and you're a veteran, but you're welcome to stick around with this video anyway. And maybe it'll pay Pick up something for you that uh, maybe you could go like you know let's check that out the window as i pick up this elite result here which is 38 inches axle to axle it reminds me of the very first thing that i remember ever really feeling about and that was hunting bows need to be short axle to axle bows now of course i haven't always been six foot four i haven't always had a 31 inch draw length but i always have liked a longer axle to axle bow because just in general they're a little bit more stable you always see the television commercials guys on youtube such as myself who say yeah the short axle to axle bow is very maneuverable ground blind tree stand Shoot, I've been hunting with 35, 37, 39 inch with my Elite Victory, 39 inch axle to axle bows, and I have never once had a snag. Not to mention on top of that, I'm already six foot four. So yeah, so maybe for a spot and stock situation when you're trying to shave off some weight, or if you're in a ground blind situation with that low ceiling, you're tucked in really tight, you don't have a lot of maneuverability, I could definitely see that. But the idea that you have to shoot a short axle to axle bow to hunt with, or you have to use a long axle to axle bow to target shoot with, with is complete malarkey. I wish I'd thrown it out the window long ago. And in fact, if you actually go back to some of my old videos on the channel, I'm shooting a Hoyt Carbon Element, which was about 32 inches axle to axle. Shot a PSE Bow Madness XS, which was like 28 or 29 inches axle to axle. And I was like, yeah, I'm really doing the hunting thing. And Gosh, it shot exactly the same as I do with my longer axle to axle bows, and I'm way more comfortable with these ones. They're much more stable, and I find myself much more consistent and much more accurate over time, and particularly here in shooting sessions in the backyard. Ooh, a little sore this morning. Thing number two that I really wish I'd stopped focusing on sooner rather than later was this idea of needing to upgrade or my current equipment is inferior. And as someone who works in a bow shop now part-time, you know, I go in and help throughout the summer when I'm not in school uh, teaching the kids. Uh, when I'm in there, there are so many guys that bring in bows that are 10, 15, 20 years old, and they'll apologize for it. They're like, I'm sorry, my equipment's so old. I don't care. Did you kill a deer with it last year? Yeah, I did. Well, then why do you care? <laughs> Now I understand wanting to have the latest and greatest stuff. I definitely like to as well. And of course what I have here is all this gear is quite expensive, but that doesn't mean that what you're currently shooting isn't great. If it's at the cheapest budget bow, or if it's the biggest level flagship that a company has to offer, they're still gonna sling arrows down range. I don't see any trad guys uh, saying, oh, I'm sorry, my, my wooden stick with a string is inferior. They don't care, and I think compound guys need to accept that a little bit more. I talk about this all the time. The guys that come into the shop that are shooting like a 2006 to 2013 Matthew single cam, the Reason, the Adrenaline, the Switchback, Switchback XT, uh, all that stuff, uh, the guys that come in and they're just like, I don't want to change my bow. This thing shoots lights out, and I kill deer with it every single year. I wish the guys uh, around the world would have that kind of mentality. I'm actually doing pretty well here today. We're about 30 yards, about a little under 30 yards here. I'm actually not too bad so far. Number three to go along with number two in particular is understanding my equipment inside and out. All the quirks, all the weirdness, how it tunes, how it doesn't tune, what kind of arrow style it likes, what it doesn't like, so on and so forth. Getting very familiar with the bow. I'll use this Elite Result as an example, though it's not this particular bow, but on other bows in the past, I like to run a Hamsky limb driver rest, and I've had a lot of bows that have been really fickle. They want to have them clear out towards the limb tip or closer in towards the limb pocket. In this case, the result's kind of in between. But my victory, I can't have it clear out here. It has to be about three inches way up into the V 
be of that solid limb bow. That is something you don't know unless you tinker with it and you stick with the bow. Learn how the bow works. I wish I had spent years and years and years longer than I have already. I've probably been spending a little over a decade really working with my bow. I wish I'd spent all 18 of my archery career, career so far working on my equipment, understanding my string build, understanding how the rest works, how the, my sights work, how my cams rotate, what's the best way to tune it, you know, are my limbs in spec, do I need to work on tiller tuning, all those little intricacies. And these guys that have been shooting their bows for 10, 15 years, they know all of that. They've been working with it. They know exactly what it's supposed to feel like when they come to full draw. And that's another big deal. I wish that I had focused more on what the bow should feel like for me. Don't focus on what the module says. Don't focus on what you see from guys like me on YouTube or from people on the television show. What does the bow need to feel like for you? So for example, this bow right here, I plan on hunting with this bow, but Nate, it's blue and I don't care. Ah, oh, but deer can see blue and white so easily. Again, I don't care. This bow shoots very, very well for me and I have it set up like a target setup. It's about 78, 77% let off right now, 60 pounds, about 31 and a quarter inches of draw length. I'm shooting it with a thumb button style release and it's working out really, 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 really well. And the beauty of it is for me, I don't, again, this is how the bow shoots for me and it's something that I'm glad I'm focusing on. When I come back to full draw, it's a super smooth draw cycle, as you can see, but because it has lower let off, it's easier to let down. And I can kind of hold it here, right? I could even come back, right? If you have a high let off bow, for me anyway, if I have a high let off bow, that hump over, that hump over back as it rocks back into the module, into the cam, it's too much and it rips my shoulder off. So if I have a super silky smooth draw just like that, and I'm holding and I'm holding and I'm holding, even a 77, 78% let off, this is not bad. Coming and I need to let down, it's not that difficult, right? I can still do that in that line. That is something that I had to learn for me. I wish I'd focused on that sooner because you know all I see is, oh, honey, you need high let off. Ah, oh, target, you need low let off. What about both? That's something that you need for you and you need to focus on. Play with your let off if you can. That's why elite bows are awesome. I have the ability to adjust both the cable stop and the limb stop. Move that in and out. I have it moved in so I've lowered my let off all in the same cam. Don't need to swap modules or take it to a shop. It's all I can do at home. That's something that you really need to play with because you and your bow are specific to you. The bow is just a blank sheet of paper when it comes out of the box. It's you that have to write your story on it. I think I need more coffee. What kind of poetic nonsense was that? Made sense anyway. A little left. The idea of playing around with fletchings and trying 57 different fletchings, I've done it and I wish I hadn't spent the money. Basically for me, it's a two inch high profile vein or nothing else. Or if you like the aesthetics of a three inch style vein, you can go ahead and go for it. Pretty much I am done trying to find different styles of fletchings that work for me. There's so many different companies and I've tried them all. AE, Q2Y, uh, the Boning, uh, Boning X stuff, Boning Blazers. The last one I pretty much haven't tried uh, is the Nitro Vein from Pine Ridge. They have an interesting glue cup on the bottom I'm really interested to try out. But I've basically tried everything else and I always keep coming back to a standard two inch high profile vein. Whether the vein's stiff, whether the vein's soft, I'd be willing to wager in particular the blazer vein kills, I don't know, millions <laughs> of deer across the continent every single year. And uh, that's out of crossbows and compounds alike. And quite frankly, they do what they do. They're, they they're just super economical, they're very cheap, they're easy to glue on, there's no vein prep like you have with the AAEs, which a lot of people like to, uh, to fletch up these days. The four fletch idea is just, just stop messing with it. Put three veins on, make them cheap, make them in any color you want, and just send them down range, who cares? I used to think that I was gonna just save the world by shooting a three inch vein, trying a low profile vein, trying to cut down on noise. And quite frankly, I just find that the reason that certain things exist Right, I always talk about bell curves and you know what the industry is trying to help us create and blazer veins and just standard two inch high profile veins in general just give you the best of both worlds. They give you a light package, a good steerability, and aesthetically I think they look really good. All right, I'm out of arrows. I'm gonna go pull those and we'll move around the yard. No, it's not a uh, lame attempt at a green screen. It is the side of my house. It's really bright this morning. I'm just trying to get in the shade.
This is uh, kind of reminiscent of the uh, Tommy Lee Jones Harrison Ford part in The Fugitive where Harrison Ford goes, I didn't kill my wife, and Tommy Lee Jones says, I don't care. Except, uh, thankfully, nobody's dead. But to add to the things that I'm very thankful that I've cared about and have always cared about, number one is tuning my bow. And that goes back again to learning how my bow works. But tuning my bow and getting perfect arrow flight from the beginning, regardless of whether I'm shooting skinny outdoor arrows or hunting arrows, uh, and it, definitely the fat stuff indoors with the aluminums. Focusing on understanding how to move my rest, how to move my D-loop, how to focus on my face pressure, and that of course then tunes into the next thing, which is focusing on my grip pressure, focusing on my face pressure, using different styles of releases, and practicing all the ins and outs of my form, my stance, my hips, my shoulders, my back, how I'm pulling through the shot, so on and so forth, how I'm anchoring on my face. All of those things. I'm so glad that I focused on those from the beginning. And of course, there have been rough patches. It did not happen overnight. Groups got smaller and smaller as time went on. I got more comfortable and more comfortable. And it's now getting to a point where I can pretty much pick up any of my bows at any given time and I can have them shooting bolt holes within an hour. And that's pretty good for me. Like, that's pretty impressive. And I think anybody has the ability to do that if they take the time and energy to learn on how to tune their bow, learn how to tune themselves. You are the person who's shooting the bow, working on your grip, working on your face pressure, working on your draw length, working on your peak weight and, and your let off and all that sort of stuff. Again, going back to what fine what fits you, but not only what fine what fits you, learn how to fit into your bow because it is just a piece of carbon fiberglass and aluminum. It's not going to move, so you do have to learn to adjust to it and being able to adjust to it and work with it, with your form, because you're comfortable with how you are, that's huge. But anyways, I'm gonna jump off my soapbox, finish up these last couple of arrows, and get in the shade inside. But if you find anything of this video that was helpful or beneficial, but it still left you with questions, please follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, send me an email, averagejackarchery at gmail.com, or drop a comment here on YouTube. I try to get back to everybody as soon as I can, and hopefully we can all learn in our archery journeys together. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.